So as, as Don mentioned, um, you know, as a brief um, uh, broader background about myself, my name is Dave Jennings. I'm a principal technical program manager within Teams Engineering. And effectively what my team and I uh, do is we work with customers like yourselves really to help you maximize your investment in Teams and then more specifically what that means in terms of Teams voice and the supporting devices. And part of that, uh, we've got two main topics that uh, we'll be uh, walking through today. The first one, which will touch on just some of the uh, foundational aspects in terms of voice scenarios and integration concepts to consider as you uh, think about uh, scaling your deployment plans for a voice within Teams. And then second to that, uh, we've got uh, uh, an update that we'll also walk through what that means in terms of uh, from a more broader roadmap perspective instead. As Don mentioned, you know, this uh, session is meant to be interactive. So any questions that you have along the way, please post those in the chat. And then uh, uh, periodically, we'll also take pauses along the way, you know, if in the minute there's specific questions that uh, are unable to be answered. And so with that, uh, let's go ahead and uh, dive right in. So to kind of set the stage as we think about um, integration scenarios and concepts for Teams Voice, uh, two core areas that we're going to walk through is one to kind of summarize, um, you know, from a foundation perspective, understanding what are the different telephony voice options available to you within Teams today. Um, from that, we'll also take a little bit dive further in what that means. Uh, in terms of considerations for each option available. But I think the, the great thing that you'll see and we've heard from a number of our customers is there's flexibility in choice um, in terms of what solution works best for you. And the other great thing about that is uh, there's not a requirement that says you have to um, deploy forward with a particular solution. You can uh, have flexibility there to mix and match instead. Second to that then, um, uh, with having that foundation in place, we'll then take a little bit dive deeper in terms of um, some of the unique considerations supporting each scenario as well. Um, so, for example, whether you're looking to um, consider uh, calling plans, uh, operator connect, or direct routing, and again, we'll get a little bit deeper into each of those further. There are some key considerations that you'll want to factor in, um, but equally important is also to consider uh, some of the other aspects to voice more than just users as we think about um, voice applications, things like um, call queues, hunt groups, uh, auto attendance instead. So with that, to kind of set the stage as we think about, uh, you know, the different uh, options that are available for you as supporting a team's voice today, the way this comes together at, at a high level is, um, You've, you've got three core options that you can that you can uh, select from based on the specific requirements of your organizational needs. And again, what often will factor into this uh, to determine which option you proceed forward with or not is, um, you know, usually the uh, persona or the requirements of, uh, of a given site that could either further extend to a given user or group of users, but across the board, um, that paired with uh, service coverage availability, and again, we'll dive into um, those details a little bit further. Um, that as a foundation will influence, you know, what options you uh, would proceed forward with as you talk about, um, you know, enabling that direct voice capability within within the context of Teams. Supporting that, um, you know, at a high level, the first option that we see most customers start, start with is the uh, having Microsoft as your carrier. So what's supported through that is through our calling plan offering. Uh, the great thing about that is you can get up and running pretty quickly. And uh, what that allows you is to have Microsoft as your direct carrier um, in, in that case. Second to that, um, which we see then kind of as, as the next uh, consideration is uh, a lot of the recent expanded capabilities we've had with our voice partners instead through what we refer to as Operator Connect. Now, one thing to know uh, for Operator Connect, um, there's also another option uh, recently introduced, uh, I want to say towards the beginning of this calendar year for uh, what we call Teams Phone Mobile. And again, we'll, we'll get into those details uh, further, but effectively as we think about Operator Connect, 
um, you've got three service options that are available uh, where you could uh, sign up to um, to enable uh, just voice for users as an example. Alternatively, you could also extend that with uh, direct dial in coverage for audio conferencing. And then thirdly, you could also take advantage of leveraging that scenario for what we call teams for mobile instead. And so it's a very similar concept and um, that operator connect model. Uh, but what that gives you is an additional level of flexibility. It's very similar to calling plans for Microsoft, um, but it gives you more um, or capability that may be required from a direct partner perspective instead. And then the third option supporting that is, is direct routing. And uh, the, the uh, thing to note in the last scenario there is that um, typically we'll see that deployed where additional uh, advanced scenarios are required, or maybe there's a uni unique case for um, coexistence or interoperability where either those requirements can't be met with the other two solutions instead. And again, the great thing across all this is uh, there's not a hard and fast rule that says you have to stick with a particular technology. Um, you can you can lead um, with just one or you can mix and match across all, all the three as well. So you get a lot of different options uh, available to you. Also important to note, across those different options um, you know and again this is another considering factor is taking into determination you know what are the um, uh, geographical and or physical locations that voice services will be required instead and so again more than just the um, the, the the scope of services that are provided within each offering you know we often find too that this plays an influencing consideration to determine you know for a given region or site, do I lead in with calling plans um, or do I need to consider, you know, one of the alternative options instead, you know, again, whether that be operator connect or uh, or direct routing. So with that in mind, to take a little bit and uh, dive deeper for calling plans specifically, a couple of things to note is that um, just like you've got flexibility and a different type of PSTN connectivity options available to you, there's also a few different options that you can select from as you think about calling plans as well. Um, the way that this summarizes at a high level is today you've got three uh, core offerings that are available. Um, the first one is uh, really focused on international, so it's an additional um, a calling plan that you can append to an existing domestic calling plan, which gives you um, coverage for, uh, you know, rest of the world. So that that's one option. Second to that, you can you can instead deploy with a domestic calling plan instead, which again would would just be really focused on the on the geography for where those users are enabled. Or thirdly, there's also now a pay as you go option calling plan. Um, that you can leverage based on the minutes that, that are consumed instead. And again, just like you've got different flexibility in which PSTN connectivity option you choose, you've also got uh, flexibility here as we think about which calling plan to consider. Again, you know, either for a particular geography, for a specific site, or a specific user persona in, in this case. Supporting that, um, what you'll notice is um, across the different plans that are available. Again, um, pay as you go is really, as this name is is uh, noted, it's really uh, a fee that's charged as, as you consume minutes. Um, second to that, from a domestic point of view, there's also a, a 120 minute plan that can also uh, be uh, leveraged. And then beyond that, if you anticipate that your users will um, consume more than 120 minutes or may, maybe uh, pay as, a go, as you go isn't isn't the best option um, for you. Then you've also got um, either uh, enabled on its own or in, in combination with the international plan where you could assign the full domestic um, or in combination with the uh, domestic and international plan instead. And the thing that's uh, that's key to note here is that uh, aside from pay as you go, each of these plans have a pre uh, allotted allocation of minutes that's per user, also per month. And the way that um, this service um, tracks use of um, of uh, of accountability in terms of minutes consumed versus minutes available, 
is it's all based on more than just having the license bought. Um, it's a culmination of the license that, that is assigned as well. And so, so the way that this work will work is that um, for the plans that you have within your tenant, and further based on having those uh, plan licenses assigned, you'll have a pulled um, summary of minutes available that, that will uh, deprecate down and then you know, recharge uh, each, each month. Then as an extension to that, um, should it be the case where you need further flexibility, uh, say for example, you want to have uh, uh, an additional amount of buffer for un unplanned overage um, in, in that case, there's also a, a third type of license that you can consider, which is uh, referred to as communication credits instead. And so really the, the difference here is um, it's a prepaid allocation that you establish up front. It's really meant to coverage those overage scenarios and or if you have specific requirements where you need like either uh, a toll free to support dial in or dial out for specific, you know, pay as you go or uh, countries not included as part of the, the service by default step. So again, the survey there is you think about calling plans, you know, identifying um, where coverage is required, what are those personas? What is the anticipated usage per user? Where those plans will be assigned? Um, we'll, we'll, we'll pay, um, you know, accolades forward in determining, you know, the, the plan option uh, most appropriate uh, for, for you. So now that we've kind of talked through thus far, you know, kind of the different options available as we think about Teams Voice and the first option uh, that most customers lead them with specifically to calling plans. I'm next going to talk to you what this means uh, in terms of the second option available, which is direct routing instead. So as an additional option that you have available, uh, again, for enabling voice capabilities directly within Teams, direct routing is, uh, is another option we often see. And again, um, typically what will influence uh, a customer deploying direct routing would be if there's a particular geography, um, uh, country or location where maybe calling plan or operator connect isn't available. And then second to that, usually it's in the case where um, we need to either provide a level of um, interoperability. So maybe there's an existing phone system that we need to directly uh, integrate into uh, with Teams. Uh, maybe it's a, it's a voice application to say it could be things like, you know, call centers, et cetera. Or maybe it's the case where we've got um, unique analog requirements um, that, that aren't um, uh, able to be met through teams where those would be directly supported through that uh, direct routing infrastructure um, or the, or the uh, hardware device, what we refer to as a session border controller instead. The way that this integration uh, comes together at a high level is first and foremost, um, you have a certified session border controller um, that you would have to provision up front. Um, part of that will also include um, the, the right alignment in terms of network connectivity. Um, one, to talk to the PSTM provider that you have, um, and that connectivity to the provider could either be done through traditional telephony needs, so think about you know T1, E1 uh, type of interfaces that may be in place today, or that could be through uh, other um, newer technologies like through a SIP trunk instead. And then in part of that, there will also be an IP connect connectivity aspect that will have to be in place to allow that session border controller to talk to teams as well. And so effectively what that uh, hardware device will enable is bridging those two connectivity paths together um, so that um, we're able to take the uh, capabilities provided from the PSTN network and then directly surface those um, interactions um, directly in, into Teams. A couple other things to note is that um, for uh, the session border controller SPC that you do choose for deployment, um, you'll have to make sure that the SBC selected is one of the vendors that have been uh, certified and, and validated. So from the link uh, noted uh, below, uh, we are continuing to add additional partners and, and new, newer partner models as those products are released. But the key there is that, you know, similarly, there's lots of flexibility and uh, 
partners and, and models that you can choose from based on your specific, you know, voice deployment needs. And supporting that, this gives you just kind of a brief overview of the different uh, vendors that are certified and available for consideration today. The other thing that's also important to note is um, though a physical SBC is an option, there's also supportability for SBC uh, instances that are virtualized as well. So again, we do see that in, in some scenarios where maybe a customer may want the SBC virtualized within Azure instead. So that's certainly an option uh, based on the vendor selected and supported. Or uh, alternatively, uh, we also see from a partner perspective where maybe a customer has an existing uh, contract or uh, telephony um, agreement that's in place where with that existing partner they may provide a hosted um, SBC you know as a service if, if you will instead and so in that case that partner will provide that SBC um, capability for you but again that SBC, SBC will still have to be one of those certified devices that's been accredited uh, for teams a few additional things to note in consideration beyond just the SBC requirement itself is um, obviously we, we have the licensing considerations that we have to ensure are available, you know, from a, from a high level 365 tenant perspective. So again, the key here is making sure that any users looking to leverage direct routing um, have the right, you know, e ESKU license assigned, but then part of that further ensuring that um, the Exchange Online Plan 2, the Skype Online Plan 2, the team license, and then the, and then the phone system license are enabled as part of that uh, enablement. A few additional infrastructure considerations to also be aware of is that because the SBC um, needs to talk to directly through Teams um, in a secure manner, um, that will require the, each SBC having its own public um, D, DNS name reference. Second to that, each SBC will also have to have its own public IP address assigned. And then thirdly, each um, SBC will also have to, have to have a public trusted cert that's installed. There's a few different options in how you can leverage that certificate, meaning if you want to issue uh, a one-to-one -one pairing, uh, certificate per SBC or one to many instead. So again, other options there in terms of flexibility that you can leverage. But the key there in order to uh, encrypt the communications between the SBC for signaling and further what that means for media, um, that certificate is the last component that, that brings those capabilities available. And then obviously, last but not least, as we kind of talked earlier, is the PSTN connectivity support through your provider which again could either be done through um, uh, you know, traditional telephony interfaces or through new uh, uh, connectivity options instead as we think about uh, SIP trunking. The final thing I'll also note too, as you think about um, architecture considerations for direct routing, is that for that SBC connectivity to Teams, uh, we support connectivity through, uh, through an internet ISP provider type model, but there's also flexibility if uh, additional uh, compliance or, regular, or regulatory requirements are needed where that connectivity path can be established through Express Route instead. So that for sure is, a, is another uh, supported consideration as well. In, in, uh, in light of considering the direct routing architecture, another important point to note, which does also uh, come up often, is survivability considerations. And so uh, to support that, there are four vendors available today that um, make available what we refer to as a local branch appliance. And effectively, um, what this provides is it's, it's an additional um, virtual machine instance that is associated to the physical SBC uh, deployed. And the way that this will work is uh, if in the event uh, the local site loses connectivity to the team service as a whole. You know, so think about where the network is down or maybe the internet instead. Um, basically, the team's client local to that site will auto fell back re-registering to that local branch appliance and provide a core um, uh, calling capability for placing and receiving calls instead. 
And supporting that, this kind of summarizes um, the feature sets that are available in, in the event of um, a recovery. So again, think about the case where uh, connectivity to the ser uh, team service isn't available, where uh, what you'll see here is a core set of calling capability uh, that is uh, enabled for end users local to that site. The thing to note, though, is that um, that failover support today is uh, restricted to a 24 hour limit. And again, the key there is that 24 hour limit isn't so much when that particular uh, failure occurs, it's more specific based on the last time the user signed in the Teams um, because essentially there's a token that is associated to that. So every time you sign in, you get a new token, there's a 24 hour limit associated, and that is taken into consideration if in the event you know that um, offline functionality is uh, is required. Then a few additional things to note as you think about um, considerations for um, direct routing is that there's a few options in terms of connectivity path and how you can further optimize traffic for Teams voice if required instead. So to kind of summarize this at the high level, I'll, t I'll talk through the first scenario, uh, what we refer to as without media bypass. This is kind of the default uh, behavior, how traffic will flow in this case. And the way that this works is that for a user that is internal, placing a, a voice call outbound, that traffic will flow through the SBC, to the internet, um, to the team service and back, and then terminate um, on the external interface of the public firewall that's um, managing access to, to the SBC itself. So that is, uh, that, that's kind of how traffic will flow by default. Uh, second to that, if, if um, there's a specific requirement, again, based on a site, uh, maybe security or persona um, requirements, um, there's a, a second option that can be leveraged that, that involves call flow with media bypass instead. And so the, the difference here is instead of the first scenario where traffic always has to egress via the internet, uh, terminate to the cloud service, and then back to our public facing firewall, in the second scenario, the difference here is although we still have to egress at the public firewall, we will directly hairpin back in and terminate on the outside interface of that firewall instead. So the, um, the added benefit here is more than the considerations that may apply from a security or a requirement perspective is that we're reducing the number of hops as we think about um, you know, processing of uh, voice media. The third option that's also available is what we refer to as local media optimization. And what this scenario is really meant to be addre to address is there may be scenarios maybe where we've got uh, remote uh, regional or satellite sites that don't have internet connectivity. And so what you can do there instead is you could still deploy an SPC local to that site. That site would still have its local PSTN connection, but for the connectivity path back to Teams, um, that remote SPC will have a proxy SPC that's leveraged instead that will actually route and broker that media connection instead. So again, uh, we do see this in some cases where maybe we've got a remote satellite office um, that's maybe smaller in size, doesn't have a local internet breakout where we can still uh, establish a team's uh, voice local to that site. But basically in terms of routing and, and the processing of the voice traffic to the service and back, that's, that's all backhauled, if you will, to original uh, proxy SBC to another physical location in region or data center instead. And again, lots of flexibility and choice, uh, you know, as we think about direct routing and different models that you can deploy with um, that, that works best. And then lastly, just a final consideration with direct routing, we often will see this in, um, in other uh, scenarios is with um, where we have a re an additional regulatory requirement where we have to further restrict how voice traffic is routed through the PSTN. There's also, um, beyond the three scenarios we talked through for core traffic flow, 
again, without media bypass, with media bypass, or with local media optimization instead, we can further layer on top of that location-based routing so that we can be very prescriptive how those calls need to route you know, for, for a given site. And where we'll typically see this come up is for countries that have that additional regulation like um, India, Saudi Arabia, and, and others to, to follow. Now, before I uh, uh, next talk to the third option specific to uh, Operator Connect, I'll take a brief pause. Is there any specific questions outstanding from a chat point of view? Yeah, so Jason Hughes was asking about Skype for Business Server 2015 and how much longer is that being supported as they're transitioning to Teams phone? Um, and he threw in October 2025. Is that still true? Uh, yes, so for that, there's actually there's actually a link um, uh, from a website that you can can go to that will show the statement on supportability. I believe it's 20 or yeah, it's 2019 Skype for Business Server that is slated to end extended support uh, October 2025 uh, for 2015 specifically. What we'll, we'll to confirm, but we'll work with Don and the team to get that direct link for you. Yeah, I think Mike was able to find that. So I think that should help Jason. So thank you. Any okay, other great. questions? From, I don't know. I didn't see anything else, but just to make sure anybody else have a question you want to throw in the chat quick. All right, I think you're good. Excellent. Thanks, John. So the third option then uh, available that you can also leverage, I uh, mean, as we kind of uh, introduced High level earlier is what we refer to as Operator Connect. And essentially, what Operator Connect provides at a high level is it gives you that core uh, calling plan experience that you get natively directly from Microsoft, but it extends that further with a lot of um, advanced um, services, if you will, that are directly surfaced uh, and provided by, by the partner instead. And again, um, what, what you'll see here is that there's additional uh, elements around, uh, um, you know, reporting as an example. So beyond just the core reporting that you get within the Teams Admin Center, they have extended reporting that they make available. It can also include areas uh, in, in terms of uh, extended support, uh, but can also further extend to, you know, there are some operators within this model actually that if you do have an inter, uh, an interop requirement that they may be able to support that directly without having to consider, uh, you know, something like a direct routing implementation instead. Also, as part of those offerings, you know, as we kind of mentioned earlier, more than just the core calling capabilities for Teams Voice, there's also um, um, for some of these partners um, service availability, how you can extend um, dial-in coverage as that applies to um, audio conferencing. And then lastly, as I mentioned earlier as well, there's also um, an, a new option that's available. And again, this launched at the first of this calendar year where you can actually, as long as you're leveraging one of the um, mobile carrier uh, partners shown below, you can actually have a dedicated number that's um, associated to your mobile device that serves as your um, main number within Teams. But then what's great about that is you've got flexibility where um, you can take Teams of Voice on the go. You've got a, a direct integrated uh, ability where uh, in terms of accessing voicemail, um, setting present status, uh, placing receive calls, all of that aligns as if you were doing the same from the Teams desktop client itself. And then the other great thing about that is um, if in the event you've got a um, call that's active on your mobile device, you can seamlessly transfer that call to another Teams endpoint and or a client or um, a device instead. So think about like a uh, Teams native phone or uh, MTR and the like. So again, it's just another great option in terms of flexibility to get uh, up and running pretty quickly, uh, leveraging the uh, capabilities of Teams voice, but having that further extensibility for those maybe personas that are more uh, on the go instead. So pointing that, this gives you kind of a high level overview of uh, the uh, how it, you would like to uh, either request uh, a trial evaluation or uh, enabling 
uh, an operator connect offering uh, by default. The way that this works is this is all directly accessible through the Teams Admin Center itself under the uh, under the Voice tab area. From there, you'll choose the uh, specific country that's of, of interest. And then also part of that, you'll identify the voice services that you're interested in. And again, um, just like we have uh, you know, mentioned earlier, flexibility with, um, again, options available for telephony connectivity and based on each telephony uh, connectivity option within, you could choose to uh, enable an, op uh, an operator connect just for calling. You could have that included with audio conferencing uh, or even Teams for mobile, or you could have different operators for independent um, you know, voice services instead. So again, lots of flexibility there based on your um, specific um, you know, geography, locale, persona needs, and how you can quickly uh, get up and running um, for those operator connect services instead. This just gives you a few different examples of, of uh, the the how the interface will actually update accordingly based on the different options that are that are selected. Once once that's as set, then just like uh, calling plans within um, within Teams directly from Microsoft, you can choose to have that operator. Um, provision net new numbers or a broader DID range um, directly into your tenant. Uh, or al alternatively, you can also port across um, existing numbers maybe that you have that are utilized within your existing telephony, uh, telephony infrastructure instead. And so the great thing there is, again, you've got flexibility there um, where, where it may make sense to take on a new number for a user and or migrate an, an existing number where, where required. The other thing that's also um, important to note is more than just uh, enabling number coverage for end users, there's also uh, supportability for service numbers um, as well. So think about, you know, again, a number that maybe uh, terminates today for audio conferencing and or like, a, like an auto attendant or, or a call queue instead. Hey, Dave. So, um, go ahead. Dave, I have a question in here, and I wonder if you could just go a little bit more into you know, that whole, does the use case, is this corporate owned devices? Is this BYOD, especially with Teams phone mobile? How is that working, right? Sure, great question. Um, so the way the way that um, that will work by default, I'll just uh, back up here, is that um, the, the, uh, the, uh, the default enablement will be tied to a business subscription plan if you will, based on the, the, the five carriers shown. However, recently, um, and, and again, this will vary by which carrier you choose to proceed forward with, we've started to see um, enable uh, support enablement uh, be made available for uh, your, your own number that you can bring forward as part of that Teams Phone Mobile experience instead. So initially, it was really, when this launched, it was really positioned for a, a business number assigned, you know, to a corporate owned device, uh, but we're starting to see, um, you know, from a feature perspective, expanding that to BYOD from a device perspective, but also your number that you're able to carry forward um, a, as an alternative option. And again, uh, depending on which carrier you choose to to evaluate or proceed forward with, will differentiate, you know, the, the different um, you know scenarios possible. Yeah. So. Really, ultimately, check with the carrier before you go down that road, right? And make sure that they are be able to support it. Um, and I think currently, right now, we only have Verizon is available here in the Americas, uh, in the U.S., but yep. outside of the United States, we have a lot more options. So, good, thank you. I think that answers that question. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome. Yeah, the uh, the other thing I would also briefly note as well is that uh, we I've also found these carriers to be, you know fully flexible. So a lot of them, what we see with a lot of customers is they're more than glad to support a trial and that evaluation. So at the Don's point, you know, just, just validating, um, you know, what they're able to provide against your requirements. And, um, you know, it, it provides a good pairing in the middle, you know, for um, one, evaluate the service and then determine, you know, how that may align as, as part of your, your future enablement. So definitely a good, good option there. All right, thanks. Welcome. Great, so um, 